What's up, YouTube? Cordell here. What's in the box? We're gonna check it out. Okay, ready? <laughs> oh. That is sick. Oh yeah, those are pretty. Those are hefty. Go ahead and try it on real quick. Hey, Tony. Oh, yep, the dogs are excited. They smell something new. Frame looks good. Man, it's a dialed setup right there. Sweet. And now that brings me to my other box. So this skate feels sick. I like it. The liners are pretty good. But just in general, most stock liners aren't what you really want. So I also got these bad boys, which are supposedly as good as Intuition liners. We'll see though, because Intuition so far is pretty unbeatable. And oh my goodness, that is pretty dang quality if you ask me. That looks good. All right, stay tuned for a review video. I will skate a stock. I know y'all want to hear the stock video. I'll skate a stock and then I'll skate with the aftermarket liner. And then I'll do some update videos with some other modifications as I go on. Thanks for watching. That was way. That looks great. What's up, YouTube? Cordell here. Hope you enjoyed some of those little clips I got for you. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be the stock review of the Rossi's um, Yuto Goto um, Fifth Element in this pretty blue color here. And this is gonna be me just talking about kind of what I felt and kind of my opinion on the stock setup, stock frame, stock wheels stock liner footbed everything and then because i know some of you are sticklers i want to know how it skates stock I'm like okay so i'm gonna talk about it stock and then i'll probably do another video down the road after i switch out some uh some of the things that i think are important to be nitpicky about so we'll start out we'll just go top to bottom so the buckle rosie's classic memory buckle best buckle in the game the one thing rosie's always tends to supersede everybody else at. Love it, you just set it to how tight you want it and set it and forget it. Super nice. Um, which brings me down to the cuff. It is riveted, which in some people's eyes, riveted cuff bolts are like budget or cheap, but I don't find myself switching cuffs on and off skates a lot. So the riveted one is kind of nice. You just don't have to worry about it. Don't have to, one less thing to worry about tightening. Um, I could understand some people that are really picky or want to maybe switch out colors if you had two fifth elements and one in, then maybe, but it's not that hard to drill out the rivets and put, uh, cuff bolts in yourself down the road. So not a huge negative there. Um, the laces that came on it felt kind of cheap. They're just cheap cotton laces. They're not like good stiff hockey wax laces or anything. I do think every skate company could try to just 
put on a good pair of laces. Laces are so cheap to get nice ones that it'd be a really easy thing to make the skate feel that nicer out of the box. Um, the boot is really cool. It has this unique kind of double layer. So this gray plastic here is softer than the blue plastic. So when you cinch up the laces, it kind of wraps around your foot, but then it has the stiffer blue plastic around for like the support and stability you need. Um, and that's nice. And it's not that the blue plastic is super stiff. It's actually very flexible. Like this cuff, it flexes laterally very good. So it's good for top sides and stuff. And now that brings us to the sole plate. Really awesome sole plate. It's got a good amount of grinding space. Um, the negative side's big enough, nothing to write home about. It's just like a good sole plate. It does feel kind of heavy, like kind of bottom heavy, and it feels really thick. So, which is great because a really thick sole plate will last you longer and you won't have to switch it out as soon. But in my opinion, this skate just feels really high off the ground. And one of the things I think about that is if you look inside here, normally the bolt goes through the boot of the skate, the frame bolt goes through the boot of the skate to the thing. But for some reason, Rossi's has, as you can see, it's just the sole plate bolt. So Rossi's has the frame attached only to the sole plate. So the frame bolt is only on the sole plate and then they have the sole plate up to the boot which if you notice on Rossi's, they also end up having to do like eight screws, which is at least two or three more screws than most other companies do. And in my opinion, I think it's better to just have the frame bolt go all the way through the boot and kind of hold everything together better in one piece. It separates, because the more as one you can make your boot, the better I think it's gonna skate. So to have layers like that, one, I feel like kind of causes this ladder effect to make the skate sit too high and two it's gonna just kind of disconnect the skate and make it feel less responsive and less intuitive if that makes sense this is a, an, a raised heel boot which kind of adds to it feeling even higher off the ground um and that's one of my biggest gripes about it is it just feels really high off the ground and maybe that's also this frame, which I think for, I'm a size nine. I think the frame that came on the size nine is too long. It, I measured it, it's 271 millimeters from center of the toe bolt to center of the heel bolt. And I feel like with size nine, the biggest you need is 260 millimeter max, which not a lot of frames come in that size, but I really like the Kaiser Fluid Fours, mediums, and those are uh, 257 millimeters. But yeah, so I think, I think a 270 millimeter frame is just, it's too long for a size nine foot. I wish they would have gone with a smaller stock frame. And this frame does feel pretty heavy. It does feel pretty tall. The groove isn't very deep. So maybe if I grooved it in on a curb or something, it'd feel a little better, but as far as how it came out of the box, didn't love the stock frame. It's not the worst frame I've skated, but it definitely wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna skate this because it's so good. I'm definitely gonna switch this out for my Kaiser Slimlines or Kaiser Fluid Fours, most likely my Fluid Fours. Um, and then that brings me down to the wheels. The wheels are actually, for a stock wheel, was pretty impressed. My last pair of Rosies, my M12s, those stock wheels were trash. These ones are pretty good. Interesting, so they're 60 millimeters and they say um, 93 hard, which there's not very many 93A wheels in the market, um, but definitely softer. I would say this is significantly softer than like uh, Undercover 92. Um, the urethane's good. Again, not as good as like an Undercover or like sick urethane wheel, um, cause that, that, uh, factory that makes those wheels are just really really good but this is a good this is a good stock wheel um and the 93 don't let that scare you because this wheel doesn't feel that hard it feels pretty good i feel like this would be a great all-around street skate park wheel um and then the, these are just generic anti-rockers they're just hard plastic they don't roll or slide or anything and they slide really good on the rails they slide fine um, but if you're looking for something that doesn't catch when you go over corners and stuff at the skate park, you'd want to switch those out for uh, 
a bearing anti-rocker, which that's not a big deal to me. So I, I'll probably keep skating those because they slide really good, which is the whole point of an anti-rocker. Um, and yeah, I think that brings us to the liner now, which for a stock liner, it's not bad. It's not incredibly good though. Nothing too crazy to write home about. I will say the one, I guess, quality thing for a stock liner is it does have this neoprene toe box. So if your foot's just a little on the big side, it can kind of stretch out and fit in there. And it's super plush and cushy. So it's very comfortable and uh, it, it will break in kind of fast over time. And I don't think you would need to heat mold this liner because it is so like plush and squishy. Might feel a little tight at first, but after like two sessions, you'll feel it start to break in. Um, interestingly enough, the bottom of the skates and most skate companies comes with like a plastic little footbed thing that protects the liner from the hardware in the bottom of the boot. Uh, Rossi's, it looks like they just kind of tried to two in one it, uh, which for a stock liner, I guess makes sense. So it's just this like rougher, harder, plasticky leather sewed to their thing. But it is frustrating because if you want to put an aftermarket liner in there, you either got to find a, a plastic footbed from an old skate or buy one, which is annoying. Or I guess I could go through the trouble of cutting kind of this plastic protector from the bottom of this and then put it under my good liner. Seems like a lot of effort, but um, yeah. So uh, good liner. Not the best liner in the world, not the worst. Uh, for someone just getting into it, it's going to be plenty good. Uh, for someone that knows what they want and wants a precise, like, custom fit, probably not what you're looking for. And that brings me to the footbed that comes in this liner. I'm not really sure what the school of thought was on this. Um, it's, like, really narrow on the heel, super well padded, but, like, the footbed part itself, it's like the heel cup is kind of normal, but the footbed part itself is really narrow. And it makes for this kind of awkward, like, uh, tipping side to side feeling inside the skate, which I guess could help with Royales or Far Finugans. Um, but to me, it just felt kind of unstable and kind of sketchy on the ankles. I felt like, uh, one, you already have a skate that feels really tall, kind of that ladder effect I explained earlier. And then on top of it, you're going to have basically a teetering point right under your heel for your ankle to basically be fulcrumed on not my favorite idea um but i will say it's comfy it's very very thick very well padded um and it, it didn't hurt to skate on and it, it kind of started breaking in and feeling good right away just didn't love the stability of that um so yeah that's about everything with the uh so this is the 2022 Rossi's Fifth Element Yuto Goto colorway. Um, let me know if I missed anything. Let me know if you agree, disagree. Um, what are some other reviews you guys would like to see me do? Or what are some other tricks? Or what are some edit ideas you guys would like me to uh, put out there? And uh, if you could go ahead and make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Have a good one.